Hi guys. Will um, it even hear you if you've not got the mic on? Yes, just about. If I, st if I sit here. Uh, hi guys, I've put the mic on Dave now because me and Dave were just having a bit of a talk like um, how long he's been playing guitar for and he brought up a, a couple of good points that I think you guys will find useful. Um, so how long have you been playing guitar for Dave? Um, I've been playing since I was about 16. Mm -hmm. um, so quite a while now, 10 years plus. Um, um, so 16, for some people will see that and think that's really young to start. Um, I started when I was about 12. I hope you can hear me. Sorry, I put the mic on Dave because I'm kind of interviewing that. Right I started when I was about 12 um, and there was many of my friends that had started learning a lot younger than that. And uh, you may be starting in much later life, you know, 50, 60 plus. And that's that's really common. It shouldn't be an alienating thing to uh, to start playing later on. It's absolutely fine. It doesn't stop you from getting better. Um, but you mentioned something interesting about, well, can you, can you tell me what you told me a second ago? Well, I was uh, talking about, I learned most of the things that I know in the first year or so, but only after a while did they start to sound good. At first I could play a lot of different things and different chords, but it wouldn't sound good. Mm. And it was the simple, the, often the simplest kind of riffs that, that would sound really good when you get a lot more experience. Mm -hmm. um, so that's something that I, I, well a question I get asked a lot is how long does it take to, to get good? And it just entirely depends on your, um, what you define good to be. Um, I define good as maybe not the fastest plane or the flashiest plane, but just making something really simple sound professional. Um, I guess that's the same in, in any kind of walk of life really. It doesn't have to be hard for it to be really, really kind of professional. Um, but that idea of you learn everything in quite a short space of mm -hmm. time and I guess that was a lot to do with you're still at school, you do have the free time to yeah. practice at 16 years of age um, that you don't have in your 20s or 30s or, or beyond that. Um, but it wasn't actually until later yeah. on. Would you, would you say, can you remember any specific examples or points from then? It wasn't until I probably started playing a lot of songs, mm -hmm. like when I started to play with bands, that I had so to playing make... playing with other people. Yeah, ma playing with other people it had to make it sound a lot better. And it had to be a lot tighter than just... You had like, to up your game. Yeah. Rather than just playing in my room and it didn't matter if I messed up, I had to get everything right and everything, all the little subtleties to try and make it sound like the track. And that's where you get a lot of progression from. Cool. And um, it also forces you to learn material that you wouldn't have Yeah, that you wouldn't, always, you wouldn't otherwise play. You'd maybe... I think some people, when they're self-learning, either using YouTube videos such as this one or using my channel, people just go for the songs that they like. Yeah, and they skip all all the ones that they don't like. But there's maybe some crucial things in there that you wouldn't yeah. have. Yeah, I learned a lot of stuff playing songs. Not that I didn't like, but that I would never have played if yeah. it wasn't for the just, band was playing them. Just or. did not think of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and often it's that's that's a you know something that crops up a lot in my lesson time when I'm teaching people. I I do say to people, you know, suggest songs to me. Tell me tell me what songs you'd love to be able to play. And and I'm often met with I don't know. You know, it's it's hard to choose them sometimes. But when you're forced to, because your friend knows it, or um, you're in a band, or just just um, you've got someone else, some kind of group musical situation, which puts you maybe not even with other guitarists, maybe with a pianist or another singer or someone who plays the drums. If you're lucky enough to have a drummer who you can play with, and um, it just makes you think about things in a totally different way. Um, yeah, really useful stuff. Okay, what what sort of bands were you in? Um, when you first just, started and then when you, you um, played over in Canada, right? Yeah, I played in the cover band mm -hmm. in Canada and that was kind of all kind of, or probably a lot of the stuff that you teach, all the kind of classic rock stuff and uh, all the modern day pop stuff and just a bit of everything. Mm -hmm. uh, but I also played in um, kind of a pop punky band as well. Did a bit of a, for the older. Power chords. Yeah, all bit pa of power chords. Blink 102. And and all the kind of the, little yeah, melodies kind of stuff. and things like that. Um, so yeah, and I mean that that was really big when we were yeah five. Ten, and there's also the the acoustic ago. stuff I've done a lot of as well, which got me a lot better at the whole kind of. What would you say yeah, about yeah. you know acoustic versus electric? Did you start on one? Um, I started on electric actually. Yeah, mm -hmm. I wanted to learn Brian Adams' Summer of '69 with yes. the. Uh, 
Honey and has. That's, that's, <laughs> and I finally learned it 10 years later. Um, yeah, and, and that was the song that I wanted to learn to play when I was 16. I was like, I have to learn this song. This is what's going to make me really cool. I'll learn this song. Um, but I learned it on electric and it sounded good, but it just, it was still kind of didn't sound like the record. Right. And it takes a while of playing a lot of different types of things to get the kind of the subtleties that you're getting in a lot of records, like the little mutes and the little, and the cleanness. Cause at first you're just playing it like this and it doesn't sound like the track, but mm -hmm. that just take all you have to do is just keep playing different types of things, all different kinds of things. And, and that just comes from nowhere. Really. And would you say, was it hard to play the things you'd learned on electric on an acoustic or was it hard to play acoustic things on electric? Is one um, easier, do you think? No, I mean, I, I love playing both. The, the, the good thing, the reason why I play a lot of acoustic now is just because you don't have to switch it on. <laughs> I'm just, yeah. it's, it's just there. I leave it in my, in my living room. I leave it in my bedroom. I just pick <clears> it up and then I'm going. I don't have to plug the leads in and get everything ready. Um, a point I found by teaching a lot of people, um, electric guitar can be better for late night practice because they are silent. Because you don't. Have that to is true. Them. Yeah, yeah. That, that's with an acoustic, they are quite loud. And post nine o'clock, you're gonna wake the kids yeah. up, or you're gonna annoy your housemates. If you get an electric, you can get headphones for yeah. the headphone amps, and they're really cheap. And uh, or you can just practice on them normally, and you're not going to wake anyone up or annoy the neighbours. That's what so. I used to do when I was 16. Put, <laughs> put my electric into headphones and just be playing. I, I used to still stick it in the amp, but I had quite, <laughs> I've had good neighbours all my life. <laughs> um, but yeah, a couple of good points there. I hope maybe some of that you can relate to. Maybe some of it, um, you know, doesn't quite make sense, or you can't quite see it from. But maybe you will one day. Uh, I just felt that hopefully that was um, useful. Um, to, to some of you and uh, yes so check out some more free lessons but that was just a bit of an interview getting to know Dave he's been teaching you guitar so this is my friend Dave Ding. can we get one of those things that shines off my teeth in post -edit? no I can't do that oh okay you can you did a degree in this stuff I didn't do the, the fancy the, didn't do how to I didn't do tingle. fancy ding stuff I don't know <laughs> what you think this kind of hoity toity degree was but we learned how to make films <laughs> Uh, so anyway, thank you for that, Dave. I think I think You're people welcome. will find that very useful. Cool. And uh, yeah, cheers. Glad to help.